was about eight o'clock in the morning and it was snowing and I was listening to the radio and on the news they said, a tanker has hit a rocks in Valdez. I was a child when it took place. I think I was just seven years old. At the time that that happened, I was in high school here in Kodiak. Because I was new to Alaska in 1976. I wasn't quite, you know, what is this all about? You know, and I was coming of age to a time, you know, I was 19. It was right at the beginning of the fishing season. And everybody has just spent all this money, all this time getting ready to go fishing. And now all of a sudden, bam, you've had this blowout. No one knew what to do. All the officials and the oil companies and the government, nobody knew what to do, and so that oil just kept coming. It was really a tense time in Kodiak. Everybody was very confused. You, were, you're, you, you just can't imagine this type of thing happening. It's very hard to wrap your brain around. It was tragic. There were many thousands of dead animals, that is birds, they, they get oil on their feathers and they die. It sounds bad, but nobody knew how much oil it was, but it didn't sound very good. But I thought it was far away and it would have no effect on my life. But of course, I was wrong. It did have a big effect on my life. For me, the story of Exxon is one of um, my family friends and, and partially my family um, feeling as if our rights were squashed by a large corporation. The Exxon Valdez oil spill um, changed so much about how um, Kodiak operated. And it's ironic that today I'm now the director of the Utip Museum, and the museum was built out of funding from the Exxon Valdez oil spill. So the fact that we have a museum is directly related to that oil spill. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not, um, there is obviously the environmental impact, but we're talking about, you know, you know, the global warming issues, all this sort of stuff. Alaska's role in it is a contributor to the process as far as trying the extraction of oil, but, you know, we're not the sole reason for it. The people that use the oil are the reasons for that. So. If I'm going to be a consumer, then I need to be responsible. I feel I need to be responsible for knowing the costs, whether it's environmental, or financial, or cultural, or social, but I need to understand and be responsible for, or at least knowing the big picture of the costs of using whatever that resource is. beginning we just thought about the spill itself, how it would affect wildlife, how it would affect the ocean. And now all these years later, what sticks in my mind most is the effect it had on the social fabric of the town and the community. I recognize as a young child that um, citizens have very few rights in the face of large multinational corporations. and. Um, they have the dollars, they have the lawyers, and they have the political backing to do what they want, usually. Um, so it, it's not an empowering experience. If anything, it's, it's one that makes, makes you feel small. It taught me to be distrustful of corporations that, in the end, now, I mean, of course, as a child, I didn't think this, but now, looking back on it, also taught me that Alaska's economy is just so convoluted. Um, our state is, the whole reason we have a state government, it's paid for totally from oil. So here we can be angry at Exxon, yet we are complicit, complicit in it all. Plastic and gas and petroleum and everything that we utilize um, the, from, from oil, um, we're dependent on it for, in our day-to-day -day lives. And so even though it wasn't one of us that struck the reef in, in you know, Prince William Sound. Um, in a way, it's a global problem and we're all at fault because of our consumption of, of the resource that causes 
environmental destruction and the destruction of human lives. So in a way, it's easy to be angry at Exxon, but it's also, um, it's a, it's a, a reason, it's, a, it's an opportunity for us all to consider our use of resources. I think preparedness and being responsible with your with how you treat the environment. Anytime that I'm doing anything, I, I do think differently, I think, because of growing up in that era, knowing what an oil spill can do and how to try and address an issue right away when you see it because it can spread out so quickly and get out of control. Um, any delays in what you do can impact others. Uh, and there's long-term effects that happen in any action that you do. So that kind of cause and effect relationship was certainly a real lesson that I learned as a young person. Never give up. I think Exxon probably was one of those cases where we were, the plaintiffs were throwing every every kind of curve, every, try, every time to try to derail the whole process and we just kept focused. So perseverance, you know, basically just don't give up. So 25 years after the Exxon Valdez oil spill, I think we can celebrate our successes in how far we've come with regards to preventing an oil spill or cleaning up one if, it, if another one happens, but we have a long ways to go.